Luckily, I have the time tonight, and it is a beautiful time because the U.S. women, the women's box lacrosse team, has won the first ever women's world box lacrosse championship. They beat Canada 10 to 7. Canada had came in and dominated. You know, they had not allowed a goal for like the first couple games. They had put up like 100 plus goals and then. You know, finally, somebody was able to put a goal in on them. And, you know, they easily were able to go to the gold medal game. And they took on the U.S. women. And it's a crazy sight to believe that, you know, you know, the, these 46 players, these 46 box players from these two countries were able to put on a show that, you know, was really, really something. I'm going to have to go back and watch the highlights and stuff like that because, again, I think we all knew that this was going to come down to one of three teams anyway in the U.S., the Haudenosaunee, and Canada in the box championships. Yeah, things are getting a little bit better as far as the world games goes, but ultimately at the end of the day, these three you know, groups are still dominating everything. The Haudenosaunee get both bronze medals, so both the men's and the women's bronze medals goes to Haudenosaunee. Um, U.S. and Canada, I watched both games. So the Canada, so the pool play game, which was a lot closer. Um, I, I can talk about this a little bit more, you know, than than the women's game because you know, again, I think my uh, shock was at, you know, more of the Canadian women just absolutely blitzing everybody. And my, my thoughts on, you know, the men's gold medal game is that, you know, the U.S. is getting closer. They're getting closer. Um, there's still some pieces they have to go. You know, when you have Jeff Teat and Dane Smith, you know, there's only so much – you know, guys like Joey Spelina can do. There's only so much that 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 some of these guys can do. There's just so much, and you know, I mean, this this was this was certainly something that you know the U.S. can improve on. They will have to come back in a couple of years. I mean, Utica, you know, the Onondaga Nation, you know, that's where some of the games were held. For the first time, you know, Utica was a great arena. You could tell, you know, all the arenas in Utica were great. Um, not all of them were filled up completely, though, but they were filled up pretty nicely, and it looked nice. The two games I were able to see, you know, on television and stuff like that. Um, and it's just, it's just good stuff, you know. Um, other teams, you know, are looking a little bit better as far as the men's side goes. You know, again, Holton and Shoney are still, you know, still holding it down for third. You know, a, it's not a distant third. And I think the shock, the surprise was that, you know, the U.S. actually beat the Holton and Shoney, the men. Big surprise there. But, you know, Israel, England still, you know, in the top five. Of course, um, as far as the men's side goes, the 10 countries for the women that came in, you know, they all did a fantastic job and they all played a fantabulous set of games over the course of these 10 days. It was a great 10 days. I wish I could have watched way more. Um, but I mean, the broadcasts were uh, pretty, were actually pretty good from what I've been told. And I gotta say, um, um, world lacrosse is, you know, they're doing, they're, they're trying to do something. Is it, is it really succeeding? Time will tell if it is really succeeding. But the way I look at it, yeah, it might be. Um, I think maybe a couple more years of, you know. You know, Europe, Europe, Europe definitely needs to be a little bit better. There's no way England should England should be fourth right now. You know, getting an automatic buy into the uh, first round quarterfinals and stuff like that every single time. But it is what it is. There, you know, as 
surprisingly on the women's side to Australia, you know, was able to, you know, get to the semifinal on the women's side. So that's pretty interesting. But yeah, the lacrosse season is over. There's fall ball and stuff like that. But I mean, I don't care for fall ball. That's really kind of just kind of wait on, you know, the real stuff that happened. And the real stuff that happened means how about them schedules? They are starting to drop for the spring. And the first of these has actually dropped. It dropped a few days ago. I didn't see it until a couple of days ago. And it is Johns Hopkins schedule. It has dropped. It has come on to, you know, the plate. And it is the first of over 70 to be released. And it's a good one. It will start. Johns Hopkins will start with Denver. They'll go through a rigorous schedule, including a Big Ten slate of five games as usual. They only have five home games, which is kind of weird. But, I mean, it's fine. They have a matchup with Virginia, of course. They have a matchup with Georgetown in there. Um, they have a matchup with Navy, too, on the road, which is, which is crazy to me. But, you know, the first college schedule for the season has dropped. And there will be a video the week before, you know, talking about more, you know, of these college, you know, of these, of these colleges and, you know, what, what I'm thinking going into the season as far as the men's game goes. Um, I'm still trying to work, you know, trying to work on the women's game. I'm, I'm sorry. It, it's, I think, I think, I think what I've said over the years, over the past couple of years is that we need a women's box lacrosse league. We need that. I would gladly take that any day over seeing Athletes Unlimited continue to be a, a thing. You know, I mean, it's for the players. That's for the players, but whatever. I'm not going to go off to a tangent about that anymore. And then a crazy thing. Um, I have no idea how you spell uh, or rather how you say uh, Rob Doe. I think that's how you say it. It hospitalized 12 Tufts players, uh, and basically what happened was is that there was some strenuous exercise being led by a U.S. Navy SEAL, and thus these 12 Tufts players were hospitalized for a brief period of time. Again, please do not, uh, if you're outside, it's still a little hot, you know, a little hot out there, you know, for, you know, people up north, I can't really say that about Texas, it's still kind of hot here too. But if you're doing strenuous activities, just just be sure to do it in moderation, you know. Please, everybody, not overexert yourselves, you know. It, it's it's going to be a process, and that's really all I can say on, you know, that. Because, again, it, it, it's a, it was a crazy thing to really, you know, even see. And I'm sitting here like, you know, what? That, that can't be right. And... You know, it took quite some time for things to really kind of, you know, kind of stabilize. Because again, there was still, you know, some uh, there's still some guys recovering from, you know, this workout that they had, and. Glad a lot of them are, you know, discharged from the hospital. It's a muscle injury. Again, it's a muscle injury. Rob Doe is a muscle injury. And again, that's due to strenuous exercise for the most part. So again, just don't, again, people, this is more just a life advice thing in general. Just don't overexert yourself as far as exercise goes. So, all right. We have made it to the very end of the lacrosse season. And next time I come to you talking to, about lacrosse, it will be in November. It will be the week before the games get started in the NLL on Black Friday. It will be the week before, maybe the weekend sometime before then. And I'm glad I got to watch, you know, I got to watch the second half of this Canada-U.S. game on the men's side today. And it was a good one for, like, maybe like a few minutes before Canada dominated the rest of the way. But again, like I said, the U.S. is slowly getting there. Holton the Shoney is still holding it down, you know, as like a third place, second place type team. But Canada, you know, 
Congrats to the U.S. women, though, for winning the first ever Women's World Lacrosse Championship in the box portion of, of World Lacrosse. And again, Canada, six gold medal. They continue to dominate. And again, for the men, I think the problem is going to be who's going to catch up to Canada. U.S. is close. Hope Mashoni's always been there, but somebody else is going to have to step up in the next few years. We have the World Games again. You know, the Olympics are around the corner. They're four years away, too. So we're going to see how that goes, too. Um, but yeah, that'll do it for me as far as talking lacrosse for the 2023 2024 season. And we'll come back again in late November for the 2024 2025 season. You know, going from the NLL season beginning all the way to the PLL championship yet again for the 2024-2025 season. Can't wait to talk to you all again very, very soon about lacrosse, and I'll see you all throughout the week talking about other sports such as the NFL, college football, and the NHL. Yes, the NHL too. Oh, yeah, it's about that time. So good night, everybody, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your Sunday night. And also be sure to listen to Big Boy's Corner. That is my podcast. Um, if you're a nerd, if you're a food person, if you like life topics, you know, that is the place to be. Go ahead and go listen to my corner on multiple platforms, really CastBox, iHeartRadio, Amazon, and Spotify. There are There's places like Apple where I can't get it to work. But those four places specifically, go ahead and go watch or give it a listen. You know, it's mostly audio only. So, again, take care, and I'll see you soon with more content. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe as well.